Hi folks, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to paint the Ossiarch Bone Reapers to a really good tabletop standard, but without too much trouble. If you do find these entry level painting videos useful, because maybe you're just getting started in the tabletop hobby, or potentially you are a little bit worried about painting bigger armies because of how long it'll take, then please do give me some feedback in the comments, give the video a thumbs up, and if you haven't already subscribed, please do so for more of those. So to start with, I've sprayed it with Wraithbone Contrast Primer from Games Workshop. Most of the model is bone, so that's where we're going to be concentrating with the contrast paints. First, we're then going to take that model and all over the model, we're going to paint the Citadel Contrast Paint Skeleton Horde. Now the reason I'm doing it over the entire model and not just the bits that are the bone, are I don't want to miss any parts and leave the bare primer underneath. And I also want to make sure the model gets an even coverage, that way it is much easier to tidy up if there's any issues. Because you'll find it easier to batch paint these, as you leave these to dry for a little while, you can be getting on with the next one. Once that's dry, we're going to take Rack White, and we're going to dry brush this over all of the bone areas of the model. I'm just using a small dry brush here, you can use a larger one if you want to, but don't worry about going over any parts that aren't going to be the bone. All we're trying to do is to lighten it back up a little bit. We can always go back later on and do this again, so just try to get the best coverage that you can. Remember not to overdo it, we're dry brushing here, not painting the model. Next I'm going to be taking Sawtech Green, and I'm going to paint this over the areas which are essentially the armour of the model. These tend to be on the shield, uh, there's some areas across the chest plate and on the shoulders, and some on the back too. I'm also going to be using the same colour to paint any cloth areas. Remember to thin down your paint a little, it's always easier to do a couple of coats rather than just one, and brush control is the key thing here. If you do go over any of the areas that you want bone, you can always go back with the Wraith bone and then the Contrast Skeleton Horde too. Just block in all those colours, try and keep them nice and neat, and then let that dry. Next up, I'm going to take Temple Guard Blue, and I'm going to use this as a highlight across the top of that Sawtech Green. Here on the armour plate, I'm going to just put a, maybe about two thirds of the way up, leaving a little bit of the darker green in the recesses. I'm just going to highlight the edges. It doesn't have to be perfect, we're not trying to create a very realistic light source, we're just trying to lighten up the armour so you see some dark areas and some light areas, and it gives a much more sort of three dimensional feel to it. Make sure you do that over the shield, over the armour plate and on the chest and on the shoulders, across the back and again down the cloth areas. Here you can see I've done exactly the same with the larger models too. Next I'm going to take Baroth Blue and I'm going to do the exact same thing again, but this time rather than going maybe two thirds up each of those panels, I'm going to just do the final third. This way you can see the distinct three different blues. This is optional, you don't have to do it, but I find that lighter blue really does make the blue stand out on the model and just gives it that little pop. Again, make sure to do all of those armour areas and again down the cloth. The next step is to take Athematic Blue, and I'm just going to drop a drop of it into each of the eye sockets. What this will do with it being a contrast paint, is it will fall into the recesses, and the actual eyeball itself, which is sculpted in the model, will probably stay a, a, at least a lighter blue, or potentially go back to that bone colour. You want to make sure you kind of go around into the socket itself, uh, and just to give that little bit of a, a glowing eye feel. The next step is I take Agrax Earthshade, and using a very small brush, I just kind of line in the Agrax Earthshade into the recesses around those armour plates. Again, this just helps to give a little bit of a three-dimensional feel, and just separates those plates from each other. Again, this is optional to do, and it doesn't have to be done, but I just find it gives it a nicer finish. I've also used the Agrax Earthshade as well on the bone areas around the sword, so on the hilt of the sword. I want to keep these areas looking like bone, but I don't want them to just fade into the rest of the model. So by putting this wash over the top, it just helps to sort of give a bit of delineation between them. I've also used this across the back of the shield as well. I also find running in this into the little symbol on the shield again, keeps it looking bone, but just darkens it down and separates it from the rest of the model. The next stage I do is I take lead belcher and paint any metallic areas. In this instance, it tends to just be the sword blade. I then take a Null Oil Wash and wash this over that metallic area. 
Now you can see when I've done the bases, I've used sand onto the base before I've primed them. Obviously you might choose to do something different, but in this instance, I've taken Black Templar contrast paint and I paint that over the entire base. The contrast paint really does sink down into the grains of sand and leaves the high points a little bit lighter. Once that Templar black is completely dry, I take Celestra Grey and use a very light dry brush over the top of those grains of sand. This just helps to separate the dark areas from the lighter ones. Next, I take the Rack White again and again do a very, very light dry brush over the top of the sand, but also do a very light dry brush up against the panels on the armor. This just helps pick out on the very edges with a very, very light white and just again helps that light blue to pop. Be very, very careful that you take it light. You're far better off wiping off far too much white and having to go back and do it again than having too much on and screwing up the model. I also take the opportunity here to go back over some of the bone areas as well and lighten them up where I'd like to see them a little brighter. Next, I take a bad and black and I paint around the rim of the base. Again, this is an optional color depending upon how you base your miniatures, uh, but I just like to have mine here with uh, the black rim on them. I find the darker rim against the lighter model helps the two stand out from each other. Now here on some of the bigger models, you really can see the shafts of the swords and the weapons. And so I've used Mephiston Red to pick these out. I find that red color really does stand out against the blue and the bone and just gives it a little spot area and an area to focus on. Once that's dry, I go over those areas with Agrax Earthshade, and this is just to tone down the, the brightness of the red a little bit, and also helps to pick out the wraps around those handles. The last stage, I take Tamiya Clear Red here. You could also use Blood for the Blood God as another uh, alternative, or potentially one of the red contrast paints. And here I pick out the, the jewels that are on the, the center of the armor. I also pick out any jewels that are on the helmets or the crowns of some of the other models too. And this spot of red on the line troops really does just give it something to focus on. And here we are with the finished range. I've used this same method to paint the entire box set from Feast of Bones, and I'll be using it across the rest of the army too. As you can see, it's not going to win any awards, but it gets a really good looking tabletop standard onto the table very quickly and ensures that you don't get put off when building up that 2000 point army for your first games of EOS. I really hope you found this helpful, especially if you're a new painter. Please do leave a comment down in the description and let me know if you've enjoyed this. Let me know if you've got anything that you would add or take away from this video. And let me know what models you'd like to see painted next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.